What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. We got a lot of stuff that we're going to be doing in this video and I'm just going to go ahead and dive right on in it. So the goal is to get the intake manifold on and to do that we have to make a couple different modifications to the truck and uh, get some things uh, buttoned up and put out of the way. So the last video we did the wiring. This video we need to work on the stuff that's behind the intake manifold and get that taken care of. That way we can actually get the manifold to fit and go on and we can actually start putting on some of the uh, other items and uh, finishing up our wiring and getting that kind of stuff done, you know. I'll just take you straight to the truck so that we can see what needs to be done. This is the wiring mess we have left over. Um, it's a lot better. If you guys saw the last video, it's a lot better than what we had before. But there's a few things we need to do before we go ahead and slap the intake manifold on top of here and uh, start cleaning up this wiring. One thing we need to do is we need to hard mount the harness. We need that to be mounted so it's not flopping and moving. Another thing we need is the transmission uh, dipstick tube. We need the transmission dipstick tube. The stock one wouldn't work. The clearances were too tight. So I was able to purchase a aftermarket one that we are going to be using. And uh, we also got to get like the, I think that's the fuel pressure sensor. We got to get that going or get that put in and uh, plugged in. We don't want to forget about that. We have ran started running into issues with the heater core lines. So you can't really see that. Let me get a light. Okay, we have a light now. So we started running into an issue with these heater core lines. And uh, when I say issue, I mean I have been test fitting the intake manifold just, you know, to kind of see what it would look like. And the intake manifold, the rear of it, runs straight into this heater core uh, line. And when I say that, I mean you can't get the intake manifold pushed back far enough to actually be able to put on the engine. So we're gonna have to figure out what we're gonna do with this, whether it be cutting this down and uh, trying to put a line on with it shorter, bending it. There's a few different solutions um, and we really just gotta figure out which one will be the best for our case. Now, I really don't wanna take the heater core out of the truck. I know I probably should, but I don't want to right now. Um, and if worse comes to worse, I will just re not use that. I won't use the heater core for at least the beginning of the LS truck life. Yeah, that's just another issue that we got to get taken care of. But uh, for now, we're going to go ahead and start with the transmission dipstick tube. My solution for not using the stock dipstick tube is using this low car flexible uh, dipstick tube. So as you can see, it's braided line. It has the 4L60E connector on the end that mates straight up to the stock location on the transmission. Um, it's flexible. That's the biggest thing. And this is supposed to be a firewall mount. So you can see it's got this bracket on here that's just got two holes, one on either side. It's just angled aluminum, I believe. Um, and we'll try that out. We'll see how we can get this mounted. But for now, I just want to get the dipstick tube in and running up the engine so I can kind of get a picture of where it's going to lie, at least for now. And yeah, so that's, that's pretty much how we're going to start off with this. All right, guys, I got the dipstick tube uh, jammed down. It is actually right next to where the uh, location is to place it in the transmission. I also went ahead and rerouted this wiring harness that I made. I have it going behind everything, like the relay here and this connector for the uh, fan blower motor um, coming up across the top and then here. And then I have it going back behind this harness as well. So it's coming out over the windshield wiper motor all the way through and then back this way. So cleaned that up and got it a little more hidden and tucked back where I needed to. I'm gonna have to work on a mount for this at some point just because there's nothing really to mount it to there and especially nothing to mount it where you can actually pull the dipstick tube out because more than likely it's gonna to need to mount at like an angle outwards, something like this. Um, the wiring harness did get close to the heater core lines. It's actually like right next to it, this T is. Um, so I'm gonna have to figure that out. I'll probably put a P clamp somewhere along it back here. Uh, I gotta figure that out. Um, but yeah, or up top somewhere to hold it up. I don't know. I will figure that out once I get to that point. But right now I'm gonna go underneath and try putting this dipstick tube in. 
All right, so if we come up under the truck here, you can see this is where the plug is that I have right now. It's got the seal and a piece of nylon jammed in it to prevent it from leaking. And this is the dipstick tube. So this will replace the seal here and the piece of nylon and go straight into the transmission. Actually, we're on that side right now. There is a large flat side and that is supposed to go uh, closest to the inside of the transmission. So. Uh, this far side from the camera. That way we have clearance for it. Um, yeah, I'm probably not gonna be able to film putting it in just because of how tight of an area it is, but I will show you the result when it is done. All right guys, so I'm back for another day. I believe the last place I left you guys at was making a bracket for this transmission filler tube. So that's in the transmission and everything and we have it all set down but we need to have a spot to locate it up here so what we did is made a bracket that will offset from the firewall back here where my fingers are um, this will be over here kind of like this and it'll be angled forward because if it comes straight up it's gonna hit the top of the firewall here so we kind of need it at an angle so we made this bracket to fix that um, originally it was just a piece of C-channel, uh, I believe an inch tall and two inches deep. Yeah, so a two by one C-channel. And what I did is I tried to bend this uh, back tab on it. Well, obviously that didn't work, it just broke off. So I had my dad TIG it up. Um, it needs to be cleaned up a little, but it will do the job. I have holes in it, so these are gonna be the holes for the firewall on this back side, and then these are the transmission tube side. So let's take this over to the truck. And this will bolt up like so. And then we will mount this to the firewall, something like that. It's hard to see because of the lighting, but somewhere along the lines of that, we're gonna take uh, nut certs and put them in so we got to drill holes put the nut certs in and then we can bolt it up And that'll have that done um, This bracket I will be powder coating uh, along with some other brackets as well uh, like this fuse box bracket here that you can kind of see um, I'm gonna obviously save all that until the end when I am ready to uh, do it or before I start getting this finished up I mean obviously I want to do it at some point so yeah these will all be getting powder coated at some point just to uh, make it hide a little better look a little bit better in the truck you know just do my part to make this as nice of a build as I can so yeah I'm gonna have to put those nut certs in and get everything done okay so now I have the bracket on uh, well, bolted up a little loosely and that is pressed firmly against the firewall so you can see the uh, wire loom kind of gets in the way for this harness but that's not going to be that big of a deal it will move out the way I actually might try moving that harness over some um, but we'll see but this is kind of what it looks like it does pinch a little down with the head I might try putting a P clamp down there and offsetting it just so I don't have that uh, touching the whole time give us a little bit more clearance but yeah, I mean, that's essentially what it's going to look like. I just got to do all the nut certs and everything for it and it will, uh, it'll be good. Uh, next, what I'm going to do is still trying to figure out this whole heater core situation uh, with this line. Um, I've seen people that have bent these. I've seen other options that we might be able to do. I am just trying to figure out what the best thing is. Um, it's possible we could cut it down and get a flare on it uh, a little bit further up and have a hose coming out. I'm not sure quite yet. I'm still trying to figure this out. Uh, there's also the option of possibly doing a hard line AN fitting on there. Uh, I've never done it on hard line before, hard line to uh, AN soft tubing. So that is one possible solution, but no matter what, we got to figure out a solution uh, for this because this is an issue. I can't get the intake on with it the way it is right now, and I'm about to show you that. Um, I think I've showed you this before, but I need to measure and see what I kind of need to do to uh, move forward with this.
So looking at it, you can see just how close we are to getting it on, uh, but not quite there. Um, you can definitely see there's some clearancing issues back there. Well, I say you can see, it's kind of hard to see, but um, there's a line it's hitting. I just took the Sharpie and marked it um, and tried moving some of these wires and everything out the way uh, to get this seated down. But yeah, there's a, there's a lot to do to get this to fit. Just gotta keep on trying. All right, so we're looking at the back of the intake and as you can see, I have started making a notch here. Um, I wanted to start off a little smaller and then work my way up. It's not that big of a notch, but uh, it's looking pretty good. I didn't get too close to the edge there, um, but I did get a decent amount off. I didn't want to put a hole through the intake. So I'm going to go ahead and test fit it back on the truck and see where we are at. Okay, so it's been a while since I've updated you guys, but I have finished installing the transfill tube or the dipstick tube for the transmission. So what I did for this is I made the mount. I believe I showed you guys how we made that mount. And I went ahead and drilled the holes and put the riv nuts into the firewall. I now have the mount uh, mounted to the firewall. I don't quite have the right length bolts yet. I have those on order, but for all essential purposes, this is mounted now. And it doesn't look too bad um, when you look in the truck. So it, if you look at it, it doesn't look too bad. It's uh, out of the way. You can get to it easily, and it actually fits as opposed to the stock transmission tube, which did not fit. So happy with how that turned out. Still don't have the intake installed. I still have that issue with the heater core line outlet uh, coming out of the firewall. Still trying to figure that out, but in the meantime, uh, there's a few things I need to do before I even put the intake on. I need to put the grounds on on the back of the block or head. Uh, either way, I need I, I just need an engine ground on the back side of the engine. Um, I got to put the oil pressure sensor in, which is pretty easy, and I might go ahead and just start putting on like the headers and other things that need to get done while I'm still trying to figure out this heater core. Uh, issue and figure out a solution to it so um, yeah I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and get to work on that I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys a little bit of an update so I have uh, mounted all the grounds to the rear of the engine cylinder head I originally did not have the right size bolt as far as threads I believe it was M10 but I think it was M10 1.25 when the actual thread is M10 by 1.5. So I had to go to the store, get those bolts, but I got it. You can kind of see it back there. You can see the tip of the head. I have my rear engine grounds connected to that as well as the AC switch ground. I have also put my engine oil pressure sensor in uh, and I have plugged it as well or put the plug in and next what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill uh, another hole in the firewall and put another rev nut in so this transmission filled tube you can see is kind of getting pinched here in the corner of the cylinder head in the firewall I don't want that to happen so I'm going to put a P clamp here to hold it out over here yeah, somewhere around that area that way it doesn't have to worry about getting in that pinch point the engine really shouldn't rotate that much when you uh, hit the throttle because it has polyurethane mounts which are pretty similar to solid mounts. Uh, they have a little bit of give but they don't have a lot so the engine really shouldn't move around the engine bay that much but it might so I just want to try protecting this as best I can. I mean if I can do something now to prevent a failure later on then I might as well do it while I have everything apart like this so that is what I'm going to be working on next. I will be using an automatic punch. Uh, I don't know if you can see my mark here, but I have a mark right there. I want to be using an automatic punch, put a little divot in there, and then I will take a big punch and a hammer, hit it, and then we will start with a small drill bit and work our way up to the right size drill bit and then put the rib nut in. So what I have here is an automatic center punch and it is spring loaded, the tip moves. What you'll do is you'll put the tip on the point where you wanna create the uh, punch hole and you will press in 
and as you press in the tension will start increasing and then it will create a popping noise and create your uh, punch mark. Um, it doesn't work every time. You might have to do it a few times. might have to twist the tip a little bit to get it to work, but it does really good at starting your punch hole. And then what I'll do after this, because this makes a very small divot, I'll take a bigger punch and put it in that uh, divot and create a bigger one that will be easier for the drill bit to get after. So take it, line it up, and it just clicked right there. Do it one more time. There we go. I just made the indenture with the punch. You can see it right there. That is where the punch hit. And you can see it is a very small divot. So we will take the big punch now, hit it, create a little bit bigger indenture there, and then we'll be ready to drill. All right, I have the next punch. As you can see, it's a standard punch. All you have to do is line the tip up with the indenture we just made and take a hammer and hit it from the back side, and it will create our punch hole. Take it, line it up. I want to start off with a 3 16 drill bit, and then after I drill the hole with this one, I will go to the 3 8 drill bit, which is the size needed for the rib nut. Ideally, when you drill into the firewall, you'd like to know that there's nothing on the other side. Right now, I'm pretty sure there's nothing, but I don't know for sure, so we're kind of just going to try it. So next, I have the riv nut. I guess I forgot to explain what a riv nut is. So. Here's a rivnut, I'm holding it in my hand, and it's kind of like a pop rivet in the fact that you can put it in, and then a uh, pop rivet, you pull the stem out, and it mushrooms this on the other side of sheet metal, and that creates a joint, essentially. So this is also used for sheet metal as well. Uh, sheet metal, you can't tap, so since you can't tap it, you can't just thread a bolt into sheet metal. So that's where the rivnut comes in. The riv nut, like a pop rivet, mushrooms the tip out in and uh, creates a sandwich essentially with the sheet metal in the middle, this flange on the front of the riv nut, and then the mushroom side on this side. And then if you look inside of it, it has threads. So this allows you to put threads in any sheet metal applications you have, which in our case, this is the firewall. Because you can't just tap and thread a uh, firewall. So that's why I'm putting rib nuts in. The one downside to rib nuts is that you do have a flange here, so you can't get anything exactly flush with the material you are mounting it to. You can get it really close, but not quite flush. Next, I'm gonna go to the hole that I just drilled, put this next to it. I already know it doesn't fit. The 3 8 doesn't quite fit, so I'm gonna take a file and file the inside of the hole to get it to where this will go inside of it and then we can actually install the rib nut. And as you guys can see, we have the nut cert in here. It fits in really good. It will allow us to actually bolt this P-clamp on. So I'm gonna have this P-clamp come up over and move our transmission line off. So let me switch hands here. Get that lined up over and you can see that we now have a gap in between the head and the transmission fill tube. So everything's gonna work out well. I have the bolt on order for this. I have a whole set of quarter 20 bolts coming in that I will also be using for the top mount for the transmission filler tube. So new bolts here, new bolts for the back. I just went ahead and bought the right sizes of everything. And yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up here today. 
Okay guys, I decided I'm gonna stop the video right here because uh, while editing this video, I thought I didn't have enough film for one video, so I kept on going and I actually have about double the amount I need. So I try to make my videos around 20 minutes and currently I'm about halfway through all the footage I have. So um, my audience retention is about 10 minutes on average. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it off here. If you guys like longer videos, put that in the comments, or if you guys like the shorter videos, I can make them shorter too. Let me know what you like down in the comments and I will try to adjust accordingly. So, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.